Welcome to our Portions Podcast, where we discuss the portions of Scripture that are being read in the synagogues around the world each and every week. The goal and desire of these podcasts are that you would not only learn and be encouraged by the Scripture, but also that your heart would be enlarged where Israel and the Jewish people are concerned. So I ask you to open your Bible and open your heart, and I pray that over the course of the next 20 minutes, that the God of Israel would meet us as we study His Word together. Hello, friends, and thanks so much for joining us again today on Our Portions Podcast. I'm Scott Volk, uh, the founder and director of Together for Israel, and this whole Portions Podcast journey has been so awesome for me, and I'm so thankful that you guys have joined me on it. We're coming to the end of our yearly reading cycle, Genesis 1 through the end of Deuteronomy, and this week we are in Deuteronomy 3. 31, and the title of our portion today in Hebrew is Vayelech, which means, and he went, from verse 1 of Deuteronomy 31, and Moses went and spoke these words to all of Israel. Friends, this is a really incredible time of year. If, if you know anything about the biblical calendar, you would know that right now we are in the high holidays, the times where God meets with his children during the fall feasts of Israel. Right now, we're actually between Rosh Hashanah, Yom Teruah, the same thing, the, the, the trumpet blast, the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, and Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement. And interestingly, the 10 days between those two um, feasts are known as the Days of All, where Jews all over the world are considering their lives because their desire is to be written in the Lamb's book of life. And during these days, it's a very introspective time, the days of awe. If there's any ought that anyone has against one another, they want to go and make it right. They're quick to ask forgiveness of one another in this season. And although the days of awe aren't specifically mentioned in Leviticus 23, they are very, very much a part of the Jewish people um, between the Rosh Hashanah feast and the feast of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And if you'll remember, these days are called God's appointed times, Moedim, God's appointment with man. So friends, as we're discussing the, the portion this week, I just want to encourage you with this one thing. You know, it's important when we make appointments with a friend that we keep the appointments and there's nothing worse for me than having an appointment on my calendar and showing up for that appointment but the person I made the appointment with doesn't show up. Imagine how God feels when he's determined that he was going to come down and meet with his children during these appointed times, Moedim, the days of appointment with God that God is desiring to have personal interaction with us. And as we read this week's portion out of Deuteronomy 31, I just want to exhort you, even as Jewish people around the world are taking time during this season to go to one another, making sure that their relationships are right. I, I want to remind you of a verse in the New Covenant where it talks about if you're if you're at the altar presenting your gift before God and you remember that your brother has ought against you the bible says to leave your gift at the altar there's something more important than showing up in a church on Sunday and that is that our relationships with one another are right so in these days of all friends i want to encourage you if if there's somebody that you can think of right now where you have a, there's a schism in your relationship where, where something has gone awry, take this time to make it right. Take this season to ask the Lord, Lord, is there anything that I need to make right with a brother, a sister, a mother, a father? And there's nothing like going to someone and simply saying, will you forgive me? Or I am so sorry that I hurt you. That's the season that we're in on the Jewish calendar in these days. And we're in, the, we're in the Shabbat, the Sabbath, between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And I want to just start off by reading part of Deuteronomy 31 
Today, I'm going to give you some key points on obtaining courage because courage is a, a word that stood out to me in this portion. So let's just start reading with verse 2 of Deuteronomy 31. And Moses said to them, I'm 120 years old today. I'm no longer able to come and go. And the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross this Jordan. Remember, friends, that, that it was Moses' destiny to cross over the Jordan and into the promised land with the children of Israel. But because he misrepresented God by striking the rock, instead of speaking to it, God said, you will not uh, enter into the promised land. He was able to see it from, uh, from a mountain peak. He was able to see into the land, but he was not able to go into the land. And therefore, Joshua and Caleb were going to be leading the people in. And the Lord said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan. Verse 3 of Deuteronomy 31. It is the Lord your God who will cross ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you, and you shall dispossess them. Joshua is the one who will cross ahead of you, just as the Lord has spoken. And the Lord will do to them just as he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, and to their land when he destroyed them. And the Lord will deliver them up before you, and you shall do to them according to all the commandments which the Lord has commanded you. In verse 6, take note of this verse because this is going to be my key verse today. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble at them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Then listen to what Moses ends up saying. Then Moses called to Joshua and said to him in the sight of all of Israel, be strong and courageous for you shall go with, uh, for you shall go with this people into the land, which the Lord has sworn, sworn to their fathers to give them. And you shall give it to them as an inheritance. Verse eight. And the Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. If you're familiar with the first chapter of Joshua, it's interesting because this very thing is kind of reiterated to Joshua by the Lord himself. Uh, Joshua chapter one talks about this, but listen to what, um, listen to what the Lord says to Joshua. Joshua one verse two, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore arise Cross this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Every place on which the sole of your feet treads, I've given it to you just as I spoke to Moses. And then verse six, be strong and courageous. There's that exhortation again. Be strong and courageous for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give to them. Isn't that interesting that God didn't say, I'm gonna give it to you? He said, be strong and courageous for you, Joshua, shall give this people possession of the land, obviously, and ultimately, it's God who's giving it to them, but he picks a man. He chooses a man. He chooses a woman to say, listen, I want you to go and be strong and courageous. And then listen to verse seven, only be strong and very courageous be careful to do according to all the law, law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. You know, I'm, uh, I'm really interested in the fact that there are some things that God does for us. And then there are things that he requires us to do ourselves. He doesn't say, I'm going to be strong and courageous for you. He says, be strong, be courageous, only be strong and very courageous. Back to our portion this week in Deuteronomy 31. I just want to remind you that um, Moses, the Lord, Moses said, the Lord will deliver them up and you shall do to them according to all the commandments, which I have commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. So what Moses said that the Lord said is exactly what the Lord then goes on and says to Joshua. Remember, God didn't say, I'm going to make you strong and courageous, but he did say, you, Joshua, be strong 
and courageous. So today, in our podcast and in the in the brief minutes that I have remaining, I want to talk to you and give you some keys to courage that I think will be a blessing and an encouragement to you. And, and by the way, when the Bible says to encourage one another daily, that scripture actually means to put courage on others daily. I want to put courage on you today because even when God makes promises to us of things that he's going to do for us, that doesn't mean that we can sit back and just think, okay, everything's going to be okay. I can sit back and God's going to do all of this for me. Friends, you know, I, I, I just got back from Israel. Uh, I, I led a tour. I was so, so blessed. But every time I'm on the Sea of Galilee with our tour group, I'm reminded of the fact that Jesus invited his disciples into a boat, yet in the midst of that boat ride, they encountered a horrific storm, so much that the water was, t- water was coming into the boat. The boat was taking on water. The disciples thought they were going to die and drown. And there's Yeshua, King Jesus, sleeping in the boat. And he wasn't sleeping because he didn't care, but he was sleeping because he wanted something of his disciples to grab onto when he was awakened and the disciples were freaking out. He said, oh, you of little faith. Oh, you of little faith. And then obviously, you know the story. He calms the storm. Friends, just because Jesus invites you onto a path, it doesn't mean that that path is going to be without trial. But it does mean that God desires to be glorified through the trials. And here, in our portion, we're talking about strength and courage. The Lord will deliver them up before you, and you shall do to them according to all the commands which I've commanded you, Moses said. And then Moses says to the children of Israel, be strong and courageous, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. And as we've already noted, Joshua chapter 1, the very same thing. God says to Joshua. So let's let's go one, two, three. I'm going to give you four keys to courage. And I trust that this will encourage you. Key number one, we must have a revelation that it is God that is going before us and will be with us. Friends, <laughs> you can't have courage unless you know that it's the Lord that called you. Look at verse three of Deuteronomy 31. It is the Lord your God who will cross ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you and you shall dispossess them. Joshua is the one who will cross ahead of you, just as the Lord has spoken. Friends, if we know that God is going with us and God is going for us, there is no reason to be discouraged or to fear. Discouragement comes in. When the enemy whispers in our ear that the situation is hopeless, God is not with us. But a key to courage is having a revelation that the Lord is with me. Now, please don't, please don't misunderstand me. I don't think that if we make up our mind to do something that is outside of the will of God, that we're going to have the courage to walk through it. Oh, you might man up with all the courage that you have or woman up with all the courage that you have. But friends, there's a courage that I'm talking about tapping into that transcends human courage. It's a confidence in the God who's never lost a battle that he is going with us and that he is going before us. Key number one, we must have the revelation that God is going before us. Key number two, we must remember the Lord in the midst of the va- of the battle. Look at um, Deuteronomy 31. That's our portion chapter this week. Verse four. The Lord will do to them just as he did to Sihon and Og, the king of the Amorites, and to their land when he destroyed them. Isn't it interesting, friends, that when we remember what God has done in our life, courage rises. I'm reminded, and I've probably spoken about this at least one other time in one of our previous portions, when when David was going to fight Goliath, David remembered that God delivered him from the, from the paw of the lion or the mouth of the lion and the paw of the bear. Certainly, he will deliver me today, David said, from this uncircumcised Philistine. Friends, if David didn't have a track record with God, 
he couldn't have tapped into something that gave him courage. And when he remembered what the Lord did, you can read about this in 1 Samuel. He didn't cower like all the other Israeli soldiers did, Hebrew soldiers did. What he did is he ran into the battle. Friends, when we remember the deeds of the Lord, he will rise up and be strong in you. Key number one, we must have a revelation that God is going before us. Key number two, we must remember the Lord, which is exactly what happened here in Deuteronomy 31. Remember what God did to the king of the Amorites, how he destroyed them and made a way? Certainly he's going to be with you. Key number three, we must be obedient to the word of the Lord. We must be obedient to the word of the Lord. I I alluded to that in the fact of point one, where we needed to know that God was going with us. But obedience is really the foundation of courage. Uh, I don't know that I've ever said that before. I don't know even know if I thought about it before, but I think it's accurate. Obedience to the Lord is the foundation of courage. The portion of scripture that I read earlier from Joshua 1.7, it says, only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may have success. Obedience to God's word is the foundation for success. And when we know that we're going to be successful friends, courage rises in our heart. Point number one, we must have a revelation that God is going before us. Point number two, we must remember the Lord in the midst of the battle. Point number three, we must be obedient to the word of the Lord. And finally, verse uh, point number four, we must hope in the Lord. I want to point you to Psalm 31, 24. Listen to this. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Now that kind of sounds exactly like what we've been reading from both Deuteronomy 31, our portion and Joshua 1, be strong and courageous. Psalm 31, 24. Be strong and let your heart take courage. All you who hope in the Lord. That word hope can also mean wait. And by waiting, I'm not talking about some fatalistic disposition that expects the worst, but rather hopeful expectation that that which God has promised, he will do. And that's really the essence of faith, right? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And one of the greatest tactics of the enemy, friends, is to rob us of our hope. I'm I'm reminded of a scripture in the New Covenant. In hope against hope, Abraham believed, and he not, did not grow weary in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully assured that what God has promised, he would also bring to pass. Friends, I just want to review what we talked about today. Number one, which wasn't necessarily part of our points to courage, I just want to encourage you. If there's, uh, if you have a disposition of unforgiveness towards anybody, anybody, especially in this season, I want to encourage you to go make your relationships right. During these days of all where Jews around the world are making their relationships right, let's be praying for the lost sheep of the house of Israel that their eyes would be open even to the way that they treated Messiah, that they would ask forgiveness and be one again with Yeshua, Jesus, the King so that they truly can have life eternal. And then the four points to courage. Point number one, we must have a revelation that God is going before us. Point number two, we must remember the Lord in the midst of the battle. Point number three, we must be obedient to the word of the Lord because obedience is the foundation for courage. And finally, point number four, we must hope in the Lord. Friends, as I'm closing today, I just want to encourage you, if this podcast has been a blessing to you, would you please consider sharing it with your friends? Email it to a friend or or share it on social media. We've gotten so many wonderful comments about our podcast, and I, I it's really my heart to see that these podcasts would go to the nations of the world, that people would, would um, not only learn from the scriptures, but also feel connected in, in a greater way to the house of Israel. 
and the Jewish people around the world that we can together pray for the salvation of Israel. Thank you so much for joining us today. I look forward to being with you again next week. And if these podcasts have been a blessing to you, just shoot me a, a note. Let me know. My, my personal email is scott at together for Israel, F-O-R, together for Israel. Dot org. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance on you and bring you peace. In the name of the Prince of Peace, Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Thanks so much for listening to our podcast today. For more information about Together for Israel and the work that we're doing in the land of Israel, please visit our website at www.togetherforisrael.com. Org. We look forward to you joining with us next week on another Portions Podcast.